Today we rank builds for the Cyberpunk 2.0 update. Let's get to it. Welcome you over 173,000 subscribers and the other 40% of you who are not subscribed yet. Today we are ranking all of the possible builds in Cyberpunk. So let me define that just a little bit here so you're not wondering, well, why isn't this here? Why isn't that there? Why didn't you do this? Why isn't this ranked? So what I'm doing here is we're going to rank all of the base class builds. So no hybridization because honestly, hybridization is pointless in 2.0. One side of that hybridization is going to be absolutely pointless and it's going to make more sense to just lean into the better one of whatever you've hybridized. So for example, if you are playing a Netrunner who is also using a mono wire, the mono wire is completely useless. You could lean completely into going pure Netrunner and absolutely delete everything in your path. You do not need the mono wire. Its damage is trash and its abilities aren't that great. I also want to point out that while testing all of these builds, I gave them the best possible chance that I could come up with to succeed. All of the best cyberware was chosen, all of the best weapons were chosen, and the only reason any of these things had to fail is if they are just bad. All right, now that you understand what we're doing here, let's get to the ranking. So we're going to start off with Netrunner. Netrunner is clearly S tier. Netrunner is absolutely broken to the point that it will trivialize 99.9% .9 of the game for you. And you don't even need to be that high of a level to start seeing these effects. You can start seeing these effects as low as level 20. You can start absolutely deleting everything in your path. The Netrunner is so broken that you can play stealth if you want to, or you can just look at people and watch them all drop over dead as you walk through crowds of them. Early game, overheat is going to be your best friend. And as soon as you get high enough level to unlock it, you will move on to Synapse Burnout, which just deletes everything instantly. Moving on to Knives. Knives are B tier. They're good, but they're not as fantastic as they could be. They do have some faults. Mainly, you need to really be in stealth mode and they really excel at stealth mode gameplay. So if you enjoy stealth gameplay, you're gonna probably enjoy Knives. Their damage is really good. They can one-shot most targets, provided that target has a head, but their damage does fall off if you become exposed and end up in a full-on combat situation because you end up losing that additional damage you get from sneaking. And also when it comes to fighting things like bosses or mechs, things that don't have a head kind of suck when it comes to using knives, turrets, things like that become a total pain in the butt. But considering the fact that you don't run into bosses that often and that you can one-shot pretty much all of the common targets that you are going to run into, they're definitely worth giving a shot and B tier isn't that bad of a place to be. Moving on to melee, melee is definitely A tier. So for melee, we're counting both blades and blunt. They are equally as good and can destroy pretty much anything. They are relatively reliant on Sand Devastan. Your Sand Devastan isn't necessarily a have to. You can use Berserk. Berserk is going to feel better with blunt than it does melee, but overall, they both feel better using a Sand Devastan. I tested both of them with both Berserk and Sand Devastan, and I just enjoyed it so much better, even though there is an iconic Berserk that does make you invulnerable while it is active. You are basically invulnerable when the Sand Devastan is active because the enemy moves so slow, you don't really get hit that often. And melee tears through pretty much everything. It doesn't matter what it is. The only reason that melee is not considered S tier is because of the lack of range. You're not going to run into it too often, but there are certain situations where there are enemies that are difficult to get to if you do not have some type of range. And that is literally the only thing that is keeping melee from being S tier. Next up, we have precision rifles. These things got absolutely destroyed in the 2.0 update. They used to be relatively good. I played with them in the past and they felt okay. But in the 2.0 update, you might as well just use sniper rifles. If you want to use a rifle, just use the sniper rifle over the precision rifle. There's no reason to use the precision rifles. Their damage is absolutely terrible. Their range isn't as good as a sniper rifle. And there just really isn't any reason to use them over a sniper rifle. Speaking of sniper rifles, sniper rifles are A tier. Sniper rifles are absolutely fantastic. They can one shot most things. There are some situations where they can't one shot things. For example, mechs, turrets, even if you have increased damage to mechanical things like drones, turrets, and such, they still take a couple more shots than one shot. Basically, if it has a head, you can one shot it. If not, it's going to take two or three. Their damage is absolutely phenomenal. They can do short range. They can do extremely 
long range, they can do medium range. If you want to play with guns and you want something that has a lot of versatility, they are literally your best option. The only thing that is keeping them from being S tier is due to the fact that they can't one shot mechs and other such things. Next we have pistols. Pistols are B tier and that is because they excel as long as you are playing stealth and you have a really good pistol. There's only a couple pistols that are actually really decent anymore. Used to be a situation where pistols were one of the strongest weapons in the game and when I say pistols I'm covering all handguns so revolvers and non-revolvers. Before 2.0 we used to be able to double dip in multiple areas to have pistols just do absolutely astronomical damage and now those days are long gone. If you are playing stealth their damage is good as long as you're landing those headshots but as soon as you end up in full combat their damage falls off a little bit and they suffer from a lot of the same things that knives suffer from such as dealing with mechs and bosses. But if you enjoy stealth gameplay they are definitely a solid option to go for. Moving on to assault rifles. Assault rifles are C tier. They suffer from a lot of the same problems that the precision rifles suffer from. So while many of them fire more than one shot per click or are full auto, their damage is extremely lackluster compared to using a sniper rifle, even when you are landing headshots to the point that you are better off if you want to play with guns and do headshots and you don't mind playing stealth using a pistol. You're going to waste a heck of a lot less ammo because the pistols can do more damage with headshots. They also get stealth bonus, which is something you're really not going to do with the assault rifles. Next up, we have shotguns. If you had asked me to rank shotguns a few days ago, I would have ranked them probably B, maybe even C. But then I found the shotgun called Order. It is an iconic, of course, because it has a special name and it is absolutely insane and it drives shotguns all the way to A tier. I even thought about maybe ranking them S tier. They are that good. The only reason they are not S tier is because they lack long range, but they can handle medium to short range extremely well and the order shotgun with the proper build actually just deletes anything and everything you run into. I do advise running your shotgun build with a sand devastan and it will feel buttery smooth and the shotgun handles mechs and other large targets better than melee and sniper rifle. Moving on to SMGs. SMGs are absolutely terrible. They are at F tier. They are trash. Their damage seems okay at first because they delete targets relatively fast until you realize how much ammo you burn through. If you are in a long firefight, you are going to quickly burn through all of your ammo and be left ammo-less. And if you've specialized into these things and you don't have a backup gun that uses a different ammo, then you are going to end up in a situation where you have no ammo and you cannot fight and you have to run away, get out of combat, craft new ammo, and then get back into combat. And that is terrible gameplay design. The fact alone that we can't stack all ammo for every gun to 999,000 is absolutely trash and terrible design on its own, but that's a conversation for a different video. Yes, anyway, avoid SMGs. You will just burn through your ammo and that's just not worth it. There's much better options. Run a shotgun or run a sniper rifle. LMGs and HMGs are a similar situation. You will waste more ammo than you will actually land on your target. And while they feel okay when you are at point blank range, it's just terrible to try to hit anything at any tiny bit of a distance, even medium range, you're going to be missing shots. They fire all over the place. They waste a ton of ammo and they slow you down a little bit when you are moving. While this isn't the end of the world, if you pair it with a sand devastan, they're just not great at all. As stated already, I gave all of these weapons the best possible chance to success I could give them. And LMGs and HMGs are the only build in which I actually died in while testing them out. Even SMGs, which are also F tier and absolute trash, I did not die while using them. And last but not least, we have all cyberware arms. All of the cyberware arms are absolutely terrible. They are F tier. Don't even bother to mess with them. In every single case, they have a better option. So for mono wire, don't even mess with mono wire. If you're a net runner, just use your net running capabilities to delete everything. Mantis blades, don't use mantis blades. Their damage is terrible. You can use a katana. It's going to do the same stuff. There are I iconic katanas that even give you the leap ability. Also, there is the thunder clap and whatever it is, freaking ability that allows you to dash to an enemy anyway, which is almost the same thing as the Mantis's jump ability. And yeah, their damage is lackluster compared to a good katana. Gorilla arms, same situation.
situation, you are much better off just using an iconic or even just a non-iconic, highly modded blunt weapon. Don't even get me started on what they did to the rocket launcher arms because the launcher arms used to be absolutely fantastic. Now they are just total trash. They have less charges than a grenade and they charge slower than grenades. Even if you specialize into them completely, they are still absolute trash. Just use grenades instead. Rocket launcher arms, oh, they have done you so wrong. Nerfed into the ground and it is a sad day for them indeed. All right, and that is it for this one. Do you agree with the ranking? Do you disagree with the ranking? Let me know what you all think down there in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video, you found it helpful or informational, please consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you're looking for some more cyberpunk content, you can find a link to another one of my videos on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.